Lemon, A Little More Red by Melissa Sweet. Alphabet. Carmen had a beloved granny who taught her how to read by making alphabet soup. Granny spooned the letters to form a word, and before long, Carmen was reading the whole bowl. Whenever Granny makes a pot of alphabet soup, she invites Carmen to lunch. This spells Carmen, C-A-R-M-I-N-E. And here it shows the phone's ringing. Carmen, your granny's on the phone. Looks like she's drawing. And here is a map that we're going to refer to later. Beware! On this day, as always, Granny told Carmen it was important to stay on the path and beware of dangers along the way. Hi, Gran! Great alphabet soup! Yeah, my favorite. Can't wait to see you, too. You heard a wolf howl last night? Uh-huh, I'll be careful. No, uh, I won't stop along the way. Right, I'm riding my bike and I'll watch for potholes. Okay, be there soon. Bye. Clutter. Oh, here she's getting ready to go. She's got her pen, paper, and pens, and paints. Okay, boy, let's go, she says to the dog, and she goes out the door. Clutter. Carmen rummaged through her clutter and gathered up pencil, paper, and paint, and anything else she might need along the way to Granny's. This says Cardinal. And this says Ink. Dilly dally. Some people dilly dally once in a while, but Carmen made a habit of it. Carmen's mother reminded her to go directly there. Please, no dawdling. Mom says, Don't dilly dally, your granny will be waiting. Bye. Okay, bye. And then she goes up a hill, down the hill, through something. Carmen and Rufus took off through the woods. They rode up and down the hillside until they came to the edge of a field. There were some big tracks along the path. Rufus kept sniffing the air. Still, Carmen thought this looked like a safe enough place just to stop and rest. I see paw prints here. Exquisite. It was clear morning. The light was exquisite. That means perfect. Just the way she wants it. Carmen began making a picture for Granny. Farther. She started filling her painting with color. It may seem far-fetched to think that any painting can be improved by adding a little more red, but Carmen believes it to be true. The poppies in the distance caught her eye and she wandered farther to get a better look. There's some poppies. Green. Walking along, carrying her easel, Carmen noticed how the sunlight flickered on the tall green grass. The ferns and flowers she made sketches in her notebook. Granny would love this painting best of all. Haiku. Thinking of Granny, Carmen wrote a haiku. My granny is plump. Her soup will make you want more. The secret is bones. Indeed. Meanwhile, Rufus noticed an odd scent in the air. Indeed. He knew a wolf when he smelled one. Sniff, sniff. Joke. Rufus was nervous 
at the thought of a wolf nearby. It is no joke that a wolf could eat a dog in the blink of an eye. Typically, wolves eat mice and other small creatures. Here's the three blind mice. And goes, Noel. By now, Carmen was far away on a knoll. A knoll is a small hill. She could see Granny's house and even Granny's sheep way in the distance, and she could still see Rufus, but just barely. There he is. Lurking. Most wolves practice the fine art of lurking. That means they hang around and check you out. Growl. Smick smack. Mimic. A mockingbird landed above Carmen's head. Mockingbirds are famous for their ability to mimic sounds of all kinds. This one was gnarling and growling and licking its chops. It even howled. This is the bird here, the mockingbird. Growl, smack, smack. Arr. Huh, nincompoop. Everyone knows it, it isn't very nice to call a person or even a bird a nincompoop, but sometimes Carmen could not help herself. Growl. Arr. Pipe down, you nincompoop. Omen. The mockingbird reminded Carmen that her granny had heard a wolf howl just last night. She wondered if this bird was a sign of trouble, a bad omen. Pluck. Anyone else might have gotten the heebie-jeebies from a bird making sounds like that, but Carmen had a good deal of pluck. She rolled up her sleeves and went back to painting. Quiver. A rustling noise in the bushes made Rufus quiver. Uh-oh, he looks scared. Reckoned. Rufus reckoned this was a full-fledged wolf in front of him. He could tell by the large eyes, big ears, and long nose and teeth. <clears throat> bark, 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 bark. You're going where? To Granny's? And your friends, too? Woof. Grr, woof. It's where? The little white house over the hill and through the field? Granny has a flock of sheep? Bark, bark. She's plump. Perfect. A meal for me and my pups, too. Bark, bark. Really? Granny makes the best soup you ever ate? Oh, she makes it with bones. Surreal. Rufus began to bark, and the wolf knew exactly what he was saying. Surreal as it may seem, dogs are descendants of wolves and it made sense that the wolf could understand his language. <laughs> so, let's see what happens here. He go hit, sets off for Granny's house. He sneaks behind the boy with the trumpet, resting, and he goes through the woods and past the sheep. Bah! This is the mockingbird imitating one of the sheep, huh? Bah! And there's Granny. And the wolf is behind the tree. It took the wolf just a little while to get to Granny's house. And they're bawling because they know he's there, huh? Trouble! As soon as Granny spotted the wolf outside, she grabbed the key to lock the door. She didn't want any trouble, but it was too late. Look at the size of those bones. This is her soup making. Wolf! Granny screamed at the top of her lungs. Door slammed and pots clattered. Granny saw her kitchen turned upside down. Then it went quiet.
usually. Usually the neighbors are home and would have heard Granny's cry for help. And usually a woodcutter is around, but on this day he was deep in the woods, felling trees for a tree house. Here he is, deep in the woods. No wolf can climb a tree. We'll need a little piggy ladder. These are the three little pigs. We can add straw, sticks, bricks. The siding is up to you. <laughs> Says the woodcutter. Voila! Voila! Carmen has just exclaimed as she finished her painting. It was at that moment she heard the cry, Wolf! Uh, it means there you are, there you have it in French. Voila! Worry. When she heard the cry, she was filled with worry. Carmen raced to Granny's as fast as she could. Hang on, Rufus. X-ray. No one really has X-ray vision except superheroes. Carmen was not a superhero. At the little white house, all she could see of Granny were her glasses flung across the floor. There were tracks and footprints, but no Granny. Uh-oh. Oh, no, she says, Granny's glasses. Meanwhile, back at his den, the wolf held out an arm full of bones. His pups began to yap their heads off. Yap, 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 yap. Pop's home and he's got bones, meaty bones. Yip, 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 yip. Yodel. When all hope seemed lost, Carmen and Rufus heard an odd noise, sort of like a yodel. The sound made Rufus berserk. Carmen yanked on the closet door. Yodel, yo, 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 Berserk means crazy, like he's barking his head off. One day you head out down the road with no worries. The next moment you think your granny has been eaten up by a wolf. But just as quickly, voila, here she is hiding in a closet, yodeling, and everything is okay. Again, it's zany. Carmen... Rufus, I am so glad you're safe. The wolf pushed me in the closet. Goodness, it was stuffy in there. I was too scared to come out. Then, I was pretty sure I heard you too. For Granny. Carmen. I knew you'd like it. <laughs> Carmen and Rufus zoomed home. They didn't stop once. So here's Carmen's house. And here's Granny's house. And the wolf dens is over here somewhere. That was cute. Look at there's the alphabet soup. Granny's alphabet soup. There's all the ingredients. Okay, friends. I hope you liked that book. I did. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on Tomsky to subscribe. Click on the next show you want to watch. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. You can follow us on Facebook as well. Look down below under Show More. See you soon. <laughs>